Well, hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue. Alongside of me is Joe Grande. Well, thank you very much, Senor Wright. Must be crazy around the house for you, huh? Oh, You're well, always right, aren't you, Christopher? Mr. Wright. Always Right. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you guys for listening to our podcast, Cannabis Talk 101. Check out our website, CannabisTalk101.com, as we are the world's number one source for everything cannabis. We've got so many great new articles on the website. And call us up anytime, 1-800-420-1980. That's right. That's 1-800-420-1980. Go check out our Instagram page, at CannabisTalk101. Well, Blue is at one, Christopher Wright. Hello. And I am at Joe Grande 52 i got to remind you guys about Advanced Nutrients. Now, when I say Advanced Nutrients, folks, you can buy this anywhere. You can get it online. It's not like it's 21 and over. No. Advanced Nutrients is the first and only complete growing system for cannabis that optimizes all phases of the vegetative and bloom cycles to bring your crops their true genetic potential. Discover more at advancednutrients.com. And shout out to Big Mike. Just love that guy over yes, there. What a man. great organization they all Classy. have. Classy. On the show today, Blue, big one right here. Jason Gann. I mean... There's not too many cats that I get to see online that I go, this dude nailed it on the IG. Passion, performance, adorability. Who pulls out the word adorability? I mean, I'm not going to lie, dog. I was this, th no double, that much jealous, actually. You know what I mean? When I read adorability, I went, this motherfucker. <laughs> he, not only that. He's got the dog pic in the picture. I mean, I wanted to go over there and cuddle him. You know Dang. what I mean? It's one of those things. And then you go and you see the WilfredCBD.com, W-I-L-F-R-E-D, CBD.com. I, I love it, Jason. I, I really do. Bottom line, folks, he's a writer, producer, comedian, actor. Obviously, everything you just seen right there that he pulled out of his ass for the IG <laughs> quote is epic. I mean, there's not so many people that could do three words and go, yeah, he's passionate. Look what he's doing. He created this fucking show. I mean, his performances. Yeah, he worked on it. Adorability. He's dressed in a dog. I mean, dude, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it spoke to me. Like, it's so funny how your three words on IG, and I'm like, he's all those things. And he's the owner and the creator of Wilfred, a series that aired for four seasons about that depressed dude that, that saw his uh, neighbor's dog all full grown, man. And, and he's the one in the dog suit. I'm not going to front. I didn't watch all four seasons. I did see glimpses of it. I did watch it. And I felt like if this isn't the perfect stoner show, when I seen everything about this coming on, I'm like, how high was this guy when he created it? Well, we're going to find out. Or maybe he wasn't. <laughs> Either way, uh, now he's in the cannabis game. You heard me say it. RealfredCBD.com. And it's at W-I-L-F. R-E-D-C-B-D.com. Their products are designed to provide the highest quality, highest potency CBD and hemp flower available at an affordable price, which I love that for everybody out there. They are very proud to finally be able to ship Wilfred CBD hemp products throughout most of the United States. Go check out that Wilfred cannabis pre-roll. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thanks, How you Joe. Doing, Thanks for that great uh, rep coming in, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm really good. Um, yeah, the adorability. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I got the dog suit and, you know, I'm pretty cuddly, I guess. You know what? When I first did, uh, it Wolf started out as a short film back in Australia, back in 2002. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, Wolf had smoked a bong in the first uh, 15 seconds of the short film. And the short film became this huge hit, went to Sundance, went around the world. And so then when we came to make the Australian TV series, I thought, well, I know we win them over in the, in the short film, so let's just use the first seven minutes of the short film. And then when we brought to America, did the American version with uh, Elijah Wood, I said to Zuckerman, the showrunner, I said, look, it's very important how we meet Wilford, what he looks like. And, and so we did almost, you know, we took a lot from that original short film and we, um, so we smoking the bong in the very beginning. And just because I said that the introduction of Wilford is very important because, the, you know, guy in a dog suit can kind of be really ridiculous and suck. Pretty, <laughs> totally, you know, right? Yeah. It was a big risk, you know, and I'd already made, I, I thought, okay, it's one thing if I make a fool of myself in front of Australia, but I'm about to make a fool of myself in front of the whole world here. So I think. I'll piss on myself at home, not out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, you know, like I, back then, I mean, there was, that's 20 years ago. 
And I thought, oh, I don't want to get in the dog suit. I've done a bit of animal suit stuff as a young actor. I don't want to do that again, but it's, it's a, it's a two-day two shoot. It's on the weekend. I can get in a dog suit for two days. 20 years later, uh, I'm still, I'm in and out of the suit. But back then when I was playing Wilfred, you know, I was a younger man and I, I kind of gave Wilfred this kind of gruff voice, you know, trying to make him a bit like an older. And, and, and over the years when you see the series uh, progress, my voice uh, became that. And, and then I, I put the suit on the other day at 420. I realised that the beard is also blended into the greyness of the dog suit. So over the years, I've actually uh, morphed like into Wilfred. So uh, I don't have to act so much anymore. It's, it's actually so funny, a little yeah. tighter around the chin. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're like, wait a minute. Why does this shit not go on the same fucking way anymore? <laughs> well, you know, it's the, it's, it, the dogs. It's on about eight dog suit number 10 by now. So we've, you know, like they do... do they deteriorate in the wash, I discovered. I, I mean, Jason, did you actually sit at home and fucking imagine this dog suit or did you have to describe it to somebody and they made it for you? Uh, oh, mate, it's a, it's, it's a long winding story, but we, we, I, had, I did find it in a, in, a, in a store. We bought it, but um, I had done a lot of stuff. We search, had to search for it. I had the vision of what it looked like because I'd done, you know, these a bunch of children's theatre shows for years as a young actor and I just used to do for every animal, it didn't matter what I was, I was an emu on stage, I was a kangaroo or whatever, I just whacked on a sort of black eyeliner on this black nose and that became my gesture, I'm an animal. And so then uh, when when we, we came up with the idea for the short film, I was sleeping on my, my mate's sofa, uh, he'd just been on a, on a date with a girl at a concert and he came home, you know, he's, you know, he's toey and he's like, you know, I just got blocked by this dog you know i went home to this girl and we even got in a bedroom and there's a sofa in a bedroom and here was this dog sitting there and he just like basically you know was all over me and, and like interrogating me in his own way and i got you know a block completely blocked from her and i just started improvising as this dog uh kind of be like uh, De Niro and meet the, meet the parents <laughs> you know? and we went, this is a short film so we wrote it down as best we could we shot it that weekend and it just went on but yeah my, my mate who created it with me he said what's Wolford look like I said oh shit I think I know exactly what he looks like I don't want to get in one <laughs> animal suits again I can the animal suits but you know I was looking for the daggiest bad like worst looking animal suit you could find because part of that character that I was creating was kind of like he was a man who was in love with his owner but he was stuck in this dog's body and is frustrated with this damn thing that he was stuck in like a lot of dogs i think are ah, you know they don't they don't like to be confronted with their dogness you know like they don't like seeing other dogs some of them's like ah, no i'm more like you than i am like them so i wanted him to have that frustration of being in this miserable suit when i came to america and i had it was like entering a parallel universe where i was in the other i was shooting venice beach and there's palm trees we'd always shot in winter in melbourne which is always cold and wet and suddenly I really people to treat me well, like in American accents. And and they said about the, the dog suit, the new dog suit, they said, you know, do you want some air conditioning in there or something? You know, we can sit, sort of make it more comfortable. Right. I said, no, I think like part of the character is just how uncomfortable Wilfred is in his own skin. So um, I, I made sure they kept it as uh, hot. And people <laughs> say to me, keep I said, see it's you bloody it. pissy all day. <laughs> yeah, I was always grumpy. I was always grumpy getting in and out of it. Yeah. Now, now I don't get grumpy. You know, I mean, now I'm back to my roots. So, I mean, I had a ho I had a Hollywood makeup artist that you know spent a lot of time trying to recreate the nose that I used to just whack on with a bit of uh, eyeliner for years. And now I'm back to the eyeliner. You know, like because now I do. You know, with the with the cannabis brand and the hemp brand. You know, I do appearances at uh, retail partner dispensaries and stores. I did one recently at 420. And, uh, yeah, I'm back to the eyeliner now. It's just back to the old school, but it will fit out of, the, out of, the, out of the, the, the bag. But, you know, I actually enjoy it. These days I think of it more as an honour, you know. Like for many years I really d detested it. I didn't want to get in and out of the suit and I kind of only really did it because I knew that so many people loved it. I kind of did it literally. People say do it for the fans. I was literally doing it for the fans. I had other things that I, I wanted to do as well. And now that I've seen how the show has resonated with people and how much love there is for Wilfred, I don't know how many times I'm going to get in and out of that suit while I'm alive. So I like every time I put it on, it's kind of like a, a bit of a ceremony. I'm very, very grateful, very humbled by the 
I'm very feel very blessed Jason, to have them. Uh, Jason, Jason, I think you've deserved and earned to fucking get a, a damn near air conditioned dog suit now, dog. You're in the cannabis game. You're a fucking older dog, dude. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what? I, you know what I deserve? A human character. That's what yes. I deserve. You know, yes. but I mean, just give character yourself a break and allow this old dog, who's now the OG <laughs> dog. <laughs> Hey, look, I, a little look, breathing I room. Done, I was done before we did the American version, and I I, I tell a story about how I um, when I first saw the uh, dog hanging up in my trailer on in season one, like for the publicity for season one here, I looked at it hanging there like the Batman suit. It's like it was calling me, "Welcome back, old friend." <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, I don't think I can get in that suit one more time, let alone <laughs> six seasons, thirteen episodes a season. Can I just get in my car and just escape across America? But uh, yeah, you know, I found a way. I found a way to love it, and um, I'm, I'm really glad I did it. Well, Jason, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jason, this cannabis talk one on one. When we come back, I want to ask yeah. you a few questions about how I've seen you in the actual uh, festivals and shows. It's, it's cannabis talk one on one. We'll be right back after this break. 